Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of Cameralabs.com. As most of you know, my job is to test and review digital cameras and write articles and film videos about photography. And I publish all of these online at Cameralabs.com. Now, it's pretty much a one-man operation, and as an online business, it's surely something that I could, at least in theory, do from anywhere in the world, at least where there's a decent internet connection and no noisy trucks going past. The other added problem for me, though, is being able to get a hold of equipment to, to write about and test, but there are ways around that. So it got me thinking, I wonder if I could actually run Camera Labs while I'm on a, a big trip away. Now, there's a few things that conspire against you on that, and one of the, probably the most important one is money. I mean, it's expensive to go on a long trip, right? But as luck would have it or not have it, uh, my rent in New Zealand had recently gone up significantly, and the exchange rate uh, was working against me. And uh, I did the sums, and I worked out that, in fact, I could go on holiday and stay in some, you know, some cheap apartments or motels, and it would cost me pretty much the same to be away as it would to be at home. So I put this idea to my family and it was a good time for them to go away. So here I am at the beginning of my trip in San Francisco. It's costing me the same to be here, believe it or not, as it was to, to live in New Zealand. So why not? Um, the trip has no defined end at the moment. I'm going to end it when it stops working, either business-wise or um, family-wise. I'm anticipating maybe six to 12 weeks. And uh, we've got a few locations in mind, uh, which uh, I'll be telling you about in subsequent videos. But anyway, you're not really interested about a guy who's going away on, on a trip. The most interesting thing about this video, hopefully, is the equipment that I brought with me. Now, because I am on an extended trip, I wanted to travel light. I hate carrying lots of heavy bags. It just absolutely sucks. So what I've got here, this, this is pretty much everything, is in this single rucksack, this aging Jansport. I have to actually say, if any from Jansport is listening, why don't you do bags like this anymore? I mean, you've got the lovely padded shoulder straps, decent waist uh, connector there. This is a fantastic rucksack, multiple compartments. But now they just seem to be, bags just don't seem to be built as well. Or if they are, they're kind of dedicated photography bags, which are great, but they just scream out. I've got a ton of camera gear in here and, and I don't want to do that when I'm away on holiday, especially in places that, you know, are not necessarily as technologically sophisticated as San Francisco. So I like this bag because it's uh, pretty discreet. Um, but what's inside is, is the important thing. Now this pouch at the top, this was originally designed for a portable CD player. That's how old this bag is. And this was in, uh, this was in a time when we all used to get excited about how many seconds of anti-shake you had, you know. I've got four seconds of anti-shake, oh, I've got eight seconds or 16. That means I can go jogging for 16 seconds before the track skips. But I discovered that this pouch is ideal for housing a camera. Now, on previous trips, uh, such as the one, my main one emigrating to New Zealand, I had a Canon 5D Mark I in here with a 17 to 40 lens. Hi, doggy, how are you doing? <laughs> Maybe not the best filming location, but I'm going to press on like the true professional. So this pouch was just big enough for a large DSLR with a single lens. And I thought, hey, that's pretty neat because I could get my clothes or computer in the other compartments. But I'm going even smaller on this trip. As many of you know from some recent articles I've written, I'm a big fan of mirrorless cameras. Now, I really love the quality of the Sony NEX models, but for this trip, I've decided to go micro four thirds, mainly for the choice of lenses. There's some fantastic lenses available for this format. So I've brought along with me this is the Panasonic GX1, which I recently reviewed at Cameralabs.com if you're interested in checking that out. I've got it here with the 14 to 42 millimeter power zoom lens. And just look at this. this. This is a small camera, a really small camera, but it delivers fantastic quality. And I really love the touchscreen display on it. I use it all the time now as a skeptic at first, but I love being able to you know, tap on, especially when you're taking pictures of people, you know, you tap on the eye that you want to focus on and you're in there straight away without having to recompose the shot or, or lock an AF point. It's very quick to use. But this is actually the least exciting lens that I have in here. I have got the Leica 25mm f1.4. Now everything in Micro Four Thirds is times two, so this becomes equivalent to 50mm, a standard lens. This is a really high quality lens. I, I really, really like it. This is my general purpose model. The image quality is fantastic. The build quality is fantastic. This manual focusing ring is just so smooth. It's beautiful. 
I went for the 25 instead of the 20 because they do a 20 mil f1.7 now that's about half the size of this so it becomes really really portable but it's a great kind of general purpose option the 20 mil uh, if you're taking kind of landscapes or city views but when you're taking pictures of people the 50 the 25 becomes much more flattering and i like the slightly brighter focal ratio and the build quality as well so i went for that one for my general purpose lens now i obviously needed something a little bit longer so I've gone again for another Leica model. This is the 45 millimeter f 2.8. So this becomes 90 millimeter, which of course is fantastic portrait focal length, nice short telephoto, good for some forced uh, flattened perspective when you're shooting buildings and things. But what this lens also does is focus extremely closely. It's a one-to-one -one macro lens and I've been really impressed by the quality of this lens and anybody who you know has rejected say micro four thirds because it it can't achieve a shallow depth of field should check out the results that you can get with this lens and indeed the 25 1.4 you can get some beautiful out of focus background effects now I'm a really big fan of ultra wide angle landscape views so I, I need an ultra wide angle lens and there's a couple of good options for micro four thirds Olympus does a really nice 12 millimeter but for this trip, another another Lumix model here. This is the 7 to 14 millimeter. This has a constant f/4 aperture. 7 to 14 times that by two. This is equivalent to 14 to 28 millimeters. So it's extremely wide at the wide end. And again, it's great quality. But look at the size of it. You know, this lens is tiny. This is roughly equivalent. <clears throat> excuse me, to the Canon 17 to 40 millimeter f/4L lens that I took uh, on, on one of my previous big trips. But it, you know, it's about a third of the size and weight. And importantly, critically, I can get that camera and all four of these lenses in this pouch at the top of my rucksack. So in terms of portability, that's absolutely fantastic. What about the rest of the bag? Well, in the main section here, I've got a 13 inch uh, MacBook Air here in a crumpler padded, uh, padded bag here. I've also got an iPad 3, the new iPad, the iPad HD. I don't know, what are, we, what are we supposed to call this thing? And that's actually what's filming this video right now. I've got that thing perched on top of a step precariously and it looks, with every passing visitor who comes up to Coit Tower where I am now, I keep thinking, it's gonna fall down, it's gonna fall down. I really wish there was some easier way to mount these things. Um, there are, of course, but I didn't bring them with me because I'm traveling light. So I'm running the business off this laptop at the moment. Now, it's got an SSD inside it, which is, you know, very fast and all the rest of it, but you need some greater storage. So here I've got a Western Digital Portable Hard Disk. These things are fantastic. You store all your photos, all your information on this. They're small, they're fast. It's, uh, it's a really, really great device. I'm going to hang on here as another vehicle goes past. That was a big one. Now, you may have noticed a, a small black device here in front of me. This is actually a, a new device I've bought. This is a Zoom H2N microphone, but it's also a portable audio recorder. And the, the one real downside with the Panasonic GX1 for me is that it doesn't have an external microphone input. But then that got me thinking, the way the professionals do it is that they don't plug a microphone into, into a camera for most, for most pieces to camera like this. They'll have a separate sound recorder and it allows them to position the microphone much closer to the subject and choose a high quality sampling rate. So that's what I'm doing here. My plan is to record video with the GX1 and guide audio, but to record the really high quality stuff on this microphone here. And then in theory, I should be able to merge those in Adobe Premiere which is what I've got running on this. I love Premiere. Uh, it's such a fantastic video editing program and that's what I'm going to be using uh, on this MacBook. And in the rest of the bag, I've got my clothes uh, and everything else. I am taking a tripod on this trip. It's a Gitso uh, 1511, which is a slightly older model. It's a, a tiny travel tripod, but it's, uh, well, it's not tiny, but it's, it's very portable for its durability and stability. That is a fantastic tripod. And that pretty much covers it. So, You've caught me at the end of my first week away. And I've had such a busy week, I've not been able to post any updates about this. I intend to write a, a blog about the, the trip and, and how it's going, how the equipment's performing, hopefully post some nice photos from where I've been. But already I'm leaving San Francisco today. I've been here for a week. I've been really busy. I've met up with a, a ton of great people. Uh, on uh, Saturday, I went to a really, really nice photo walk that had been hosted uh, by Flickr. 
met some really really nice people uh, again from Flickr and also from Google Plus that all these people who I just I didn't know anyone in San Francisco a year ago I've been coming here for years and then Google Plus started and suddenly I know all these people here and and it's fantastic to meet them in real life hang out in real life a hurl so we we did that and uh, Trey Ratcliffe who runs stuckincustoms.com he he was in town as well so I hung out with him a bit and uh, Thomas Hawke, Karen Hutton, and a ton of other people. It's just such an exciting city to, to meet people who are into technology and also catching up with, with some old friends too. So I've had a really good time, but it's time for me to go. I now get onto a plane in a couple of hours' time, uh, heading back to the UK, but then flying straight out to Morocco. So that's going to be a really interesting destination for me because I've never been there before. And I'm really hoping to take some photos of some, uh, you know, beautiful night markets. That ultra wide is going to be great for that. And also some sand dunes, uh, sunrise and sunset. Although I'm sure there could be some uh, camel situations that, that you won't want to know about. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's not been too self-indulgent and that you've got some interesting information about, you know, traveling light, uh, you know, using ultra portable laptops, portable hard disks not conventional DSLRs but but mirrorless cameras in order to achieve the quality and the results you want but in a much smaller and lighter package. I've, Like I say I've got pretty much everything I need for a round the world trip in this single bag and it weighs just over six kilograms which is about 14-15 pounds. That's it. I'll see you on my next video. Take care. Oh, and as a quick PS, the reviews are still coming at Cameralabs.com. I've got a ton of results that I'm still processing for models like the Canon 5D Mark III, the Nikon D800. I've got loads of lens tests that, that I need to process. So you'll still get loads of reviews from me with that beautiful Queenstown, New Zealand backdrop. And Ken McMahon, my man in the UK, is also been, uh, will also be doing lots of reviews. Most recently, he sent me a review of the Sony Alpha SLT A77 and the Samsung NX200. So again, two really innovative cameras. So if you're interested in reviews of those and, of course, anything else, then please head over to Cameralabs.com.